What up, what up, what is up? You already know who it is. Urban Culture. Coming in with some more juice. But my God, we're going to start off on a little bit of a crazy tip right at the pause. Right in the beginning, you got Diddy and his freak offs allegedly had minors dressed as Harajuku Barbies. So Tania Wallace spoke to TMZ for their documentary, The Downfall of Diddy, inside the freak offs. And she recounted her alleged experience at the parties. She said, I'm looking in the corner and thinking, are those midgets? Because there were people over them like people trying to hide what they were doing all huddled. But no, they weren't. They were little people. Little people dressed up like Harajuku Barbies. Red lipstick looking like real sexy. She was asked to clarify whether she was talking about adult little people or in fact children. But her answer was, am I going to get in trouble? I don't want to say I witnessed any of that crazy stuff, but we all have common sense. Little people, that's not supposed to be there. Tania Wallace, I am a singer songwriter and I was at one of, I believe to be one of P. Diddy's freak offs. 2018, I went to this freak off. I looked to the right of me and in the corner, I'm, th I'm looking like, are those midgets? Because people were trying to, it's people over them. Like it's people trying to hide what they're doing. They're all huddled up. So I'm like, what is that? But no, they weren't. They were little people. And you know, I don't want to say too much. They were little people. So use your common sense. Dressed up like little Harajuku Barbies, red lipstick, looking like real sexy, you know, revealing like cute. So I'm like, what the hell? What were the little people doing? Getting covered up, just trying to cover up what they were doing. Just, I don't know, like being admired, being hid, something. But it's like, what are you? Do what are they doing here? Because this is a grown party. Are you talking about adults who are little people, or are you talking about minors? Am I gonna get in trouble? <laughs> I don't want to say I witnessed any of that crazy stuff, but we all have common sense. Little people, it's not supposed to be there. You're talking about underage people. a shame. So far, Diddy and his legal team have not yet responded to the claims made within the documentary. Furthermore, he recently denied the SA of a 10 year old boy after a lawsuit was filed by an anonymous man regarding an incident that allegedly took place in 2005. I'm not going to go and explain that one because that one is. Duh, that's a little. I, <laughs> I don't want to. I ain't trying to mess up the YouTube channel right now, but this is some crazy stuff and i get it that word alleged we don't know if it's been true or not or if it's proven true but just to know these stories are out surrounding this gentleman or surrounding this man it's i mean it's it's, it's sickening we're gonna just step to the side i'm gonna leave that with y'all we start like i said we starting off full full court straight to the front press right now this juice right here ultimo squeeze pause Staying with the same topic of Diddy, because there's a lot more rising up, I guess, dealing with the election and this, people starting to say some stuff. Like Tyrese blamed Diddy freak off rumors on Donald Trump supporters. What? what? I ain't gonna blame that on supporters. Let's ch check out what he said. Hold on, let's check this out. There is no such thing as a Diddy tape. <laughs> Literally. So allegedly, whatever that brother is dealing with whatever reasons he's in jail whatever the fbi and the law is dealing with allegedly pertaining to diddy i want to tell y'all that i've been to some of the most legendary parties i got no regrets i think some of the best parties in la and if you're from la and you've been to these parties uh you would know that Diddy always had the most legendary parties that were always star-studded, the biggest and 
biggest and most legendary stars, white, black, Latino, Asian, billionaires, fashion, you name it, Diddy, hands down. From the Hamptons, all the way to LA, all the way to his legendary New Year's parties that he would do uh, in Miami. Uh, I got plenty of photos, uh, proudly, like every other celebrity and star that went to his party. Anybody who's not on the internet talking about a Diddy party, you should be more concerned about them, <laughs> allegedly, about what they did or what, what they on tape doing. I There is no such thing, allegedly, as a Tyrese Diddy tape. That is a bunch of Donald Trump niggas in my comments trying to discourage me from speaking up and speaking out. I mean, I guess it's nice to hear a different perspective on the whole issue itself after so many people have just been on the negative. So, okay. But I don't know. Do you feel like maybe he's just, I guess, wasn't participating in shit like that? Or it might be a little bit too late to even take it. Like, how do y'all feel about Tyrese's statement on that. Do y'all feel like that's something y'all believe or is there too much evidence just pointing towards the opposite direction of that? I'm gonna leave that to y'all, but y'all let me know. Like, y'all feel like this nigga might just be, you know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know. That's just gonna be in the comments. Just shifting gears though, we're gonna go into how 6ix9ine is to stay isolated from Diddy in jail while he awaits his release. So as y'all know, he is in prison now, but um, as far as the sentence, it includes 30 more days left after that, he has a month of home incarceration. And third, he will have another month of a looser home detention. And then finally, after that, he will go through a month of curfew, being completely free. After, of course. Um, with that being said, while he's in prison for that 30 days, he'll be at MDC. And he will not be in the same section as Diddy. In fact, he's been isolated completely from him both celebrities usually get the rest of the inmates excited but not in the way that you may think i'm guessing basically you got everybody trying to either knock the fuck out of uh, six nine or you know trying to do something to diddy but it would make sense that both of them are of course you know either not by each other or just the simple fact that they ain't dealing with each other yeah it's just crazy not actually crazy no it makes sense but what y'all think about that? Y'all think it's like, hey, well deserved? Or is there something bigger at play for why they won't let them be around each other? You know, still stand on something possibly being bigger at play. You have Dame Dash praising Donald Trump for using Diddy to defeat Kamala Harris. Check, check this video out. Here it is. It's just the way and how strategic it was. Because now also I'm looking at, damn, how did he win? I'm like, no, he... He like said every single thing that can trigger someone that anyone can say. And to me, and I, I wasn't mad at it because he's entertaining, but you know, when, when he's doing his rallies, he's just, he's like kind of funny, like a comedian. And it just felt like, number one, um, people just wanted to talk to somebody that they could have a regular conversation with. They didn't even care about the issues. But then I was thinking deeper and I was like, well, Damn, yeah, Elon Musk. And I was looking at um, Kamala's campaign. I'm like, it was a pretty good campaign. But what I would have done different is I would have stood away from the celebrities. In this moment, to me, just because of the circumstances, it's not the best thing to be next to a celebrity. Like, I believe they, they, they leveraged the push thing so well. Like, I'm looking, I'm like, well, they didn't have any celebrities, and the celebrities they had were like C minor. No disrespect to anybody. They were basically people that were kind of famous, but it was like people that are still kind of struggling. And I thought Kamala, she really invested a lot in the people that may have been at the puff parties. It's a gray area there. So what they did there was they, number one, they made sure, because I was always saying, I was like, why are they doing this thing shit during the election? They made sure everybody, not just black and hip hop, the whole world knew who Puff was and what he was accused of. But then they accused everybody that was at his party, to me, of being a part of it because they never said exactly who those celebrities were. So until further notice, it's every celebrity until somebody speaks up. So right now, to me, 
being a celebrity is tainted. And a lot of the people I saw speaking on those stages were celebrities that may be in the gray area. They may have been hot. They may have had those affiliations. So even me, a person that, you know, I, I wasn't expecting Trump to win. I still, and I was, you know, pushing. I, I, I still was like, I, I, certain people, I'd be like, I wouldn't have chose those people because they hot. Because they're still in the gray area. And then I was like, damn, why would they, why would she choose certain people knowing that they're hot? Or does she know that they're kind of hot? And at least on a like social media level. But think about it. Elon owns Twitter. And every time someone endorsed Carmela, Elon would say, why would you trust them? They were at a puff party. And then he would put that in the algorithm. He does AI. He knows behavior patterns. He owns social media. So once he was over there and I'm like, damn, they're just leveraging that situation to negate the power of the celebrity. Now, now deciding she's like warning people against Trump. I'm Is like, well, wait a second. So how many people did she warn against Diddy? Right. Oh, zero. Okay. Right. Well, uh, maybe we shouldn't trust her opinion. I think right now, the way people are looking at a celebrity is you got to be a little weird to be a celebrity or you have to compromise a little to be a celebrity. And because we don't know which celebrity it is, it must be all of y'all. Anyone that was at the party, they would choose me because there's pictures of me at the party and I see, you know, my name in the mix. And I'm like, I haven't been. That was like 2000. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was, it, you know, it wasn't. So, you know, even when Taylor Swift got in every single person that was a celebrity. Hey, he made some extremely good points right there. I, I can agree with that wholeheartedly. If you got a lot of things that's associated with somebody who's not only getting blacklisted, but canceled and a lot of people that are potentially associated with them, you don't want to be seen by them. And yeah, you can really be seen as shooting yourself in the foot when it came to that campaign. But I'm just, I'll turn that to y'all. What do y'all think? Y'all think he, uh, that was just a setup and a, a alley oop to knock that bit down. You know what I'm saying? Did she get to shoot herself in the foot when it came to that? Just being more focused on the celebrities rather than, um, I guess the the uh, reputation of them. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, let me know how y'all feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but speaking of Kamala, uh, we got Oprah Winfrey shutting down the rumors that Kamala Harris paid her one million for endorsements. Hey, Oprah. Good morning. How are you, darling? You're looking very good. How do you think the election went? Not talking about the election, thank you very much. Oh, is it true that they paid you a million dollars for the endorsement for Kamala? Not true. Not true, okay. I was paid nothing, ever. What do you think about all the celebrities with their mass exodus? I'm not talking about do you think? Do you think Prince Harry's gonna lose his visa now that Trump's president? Thank you, Oprah. Here on the post, she put in response to Idi Gala saying, y'all thinking Oprah's supports can be purchased is beyond me. And she says, thank you so much for saying this. I want to high five you and give you a hug. Usually I'm a reluctant and uh, I'm reluctant to respond to rumors in general. But these days I realize that if you don't stop a lie, it just gets bigger. I was not paid a dime. My time and energy was my way of supporting the campaign. For the live streaming event in September, my production company Harpo was asked to bring in set design, lights, cameras, microphones, crew, pr uh, producers, and every other necessary item, including the benches and chairs we sat on, to put on a live production. I did not take any personal fee. However, the people who worked on the production needed to be paid and were end of story i mean to be honest with y'all oprah makes way too much for one million dollars to be oh shit i'm gonna jump at it like bro again the lady who gave everybody in her studio a free car she is the meme of anything in abundance that everybody can get it hands is universal you get these hands you get these hands you get these hands. oprah is about that she, one million dollars is not going to make her budge the slightest let's just be real about that i'm gonna still turn that over to y'all i'd love to hear y'all opinion about the matter but i'm pretty set on that and i don't think she would have got paid for any of that shit 
think she was in support of it and she wanted to push that movement, let her do it. But stepping over to somebody else that I'm still wondering, like, what the hell is this boy doing? Ray J claims someone just tried to shoot him. Man, what the fuck? Check this out. Niggas just tried to shoot me and tried to kill me, nigga. And you want me to apologize, nigga? Fuck you. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's just really... Ray J does a lot, right? He does a lot for, you know, his companies, for, you know, just his family. He does a lot. He just... He's a very he's very much a businessman. He moves more than his hat did in that scene. But it's hard for me to take this man serious regardless of what he's talking about. Like it's just yeah, I don't know what it is. Like every time I hear him talking, I just think, if I had one wish, like that's all I think about. That's all I think. This, the fucking song, it goes hard, but it's it's hard for me to see this man and think like, oh shit. I better watch out. He's about to make some shit happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know who tried to shoot him. I don't know if somebody did try to shoot him. I don't know if it was an acorn dropping on a windshield. All I know is apparently niggas tried to shoot him. And niggas want him to apologize. Uh, fuck them. That's all it is. I turn that over to y'all, but I don't know what else you could say besides that. Oh, you know what I could say? I could say how Kanye West has reportedly taken out a huge loan to buy a $35 million mansion. Yeah, damn. So according to Daily Mail, on Monday, November 11th, Kanye and his wife, Bianca, borrowed a total of $15.5 million. Twelve and a half million dollars of total came from Lone Oak Fund and its investments arm Lone Oak Industries and nearly 2.7 million came from a company owned by fitness entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs Richard and Lucy Glassman via a private money lender whose motto is when the banks say no, private money is the only way to go. The Glassman spoke to the outlet about their decision to fund Ye saying, when you have a total of 40% loan to value, it's a good investment. This is the great creativity of the broker. It's not the creativity of Kanye West. They do all the due diligence. I'm just a little guy. To be totally honest, sometimes when investors look at celebrities, they don't want to do it. Well, it definitely is because if they don't pay, we get a $35 million property. He also added, but we would prefer they just pay. We don't want to hurt nobody. We're just investors. We want to get a return on our money. And this 20,000 square foot compound comes with 11 bedrooms, 18 bathrooms, a guest house, a swimming pool, a tennis court, and even its own waterfall. And Kanye does not plan to live there, but instead rent it out. That is actually extremely wild it makes sense though you know what i'm saying and i know he was planning on building his own city in the middle east with a project tall called yeezy drone which is probably gonna be some crazy shit so i don't know why he, he that's probably why he written this shit out so he can get some more money for his city but my god 35 mil that's a lot of money sorry i just i don't know even know why did why the fuck did i say that it, yeah, it don't even matter because you know what I'm enjoying myself and I want y'all to be enjoying yourself too. So if anything, if you came back to your first time seeing it, let me know if you enjoyed yourself. Let me know if you enjoying yourself with these videos. And if you're a return viewer, same thing. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, everything under the sun just to let us know you like it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all already know who it is. Urban culture saying peace.